Bird out. Welcome to another episode of This Is Sevens. I'm down at the pitch today doing a kicking session on my day off and I thought I'd give you my top 10 tips that will help you become a professional rugby player. I've saved the biggest, most important one till the end. And the doctor is in the house. One. So I've been a professional for the last 10 years and these tips are aimed at younger players and their parents. It's advice I give myself as a younger player or things I would do again. I obviously play sevens but I came up through a professional 15s environment so these tips should work for both. Very quickly we have a previous video on how I became a professional sevens player and the common pathways up here. So the most skillful and best players I've played with over the years pretty much always played multiple sports as youngsters, often to a very high level. The development and transfer of skills like coordination, mobility, agility, teamwork are so helpful when looking to improve your rugby. When I was younger I played so many different sports, football, tennis, squash, climbing, swimming, the list goes on, so try and play as many sports as you can when you're younger. The one sport I didn't do and if I had my time again I would definitely do is gymnastics. I think the physical development is amazing and it teaches you lots of cool skills. This is just to warm the leg up a little bit. Come round then. That's the one. That's the best strike on the last one. Don't worry if you're not picked up by a professional club by the time you're 15 or 16, it's not too late. The age at which it is too late is a lot higher than you think and I know plenty of players who were the next big thing at 16 and never played a professional game of rugby in their life and I know plenty of players who became professionals in their late 20s so don't give up on the dream. So this drill is for getting some height on drop kicks, aim is to stand as close to the post as possible, drop kick it, patient on the bounce, let it bounce up a bit higher and kick it over the crossbar. That was an awful drop. Inside of the boot. That's the best one. There we go. A key trait that all professional coaches look at is how well and how quickly you can take on new information. So if you want to be a pro, keep looking for opportunities to learn and develop your skills and game understanding. A common failure that's repeated time and time again in younger rugby is the younger player who hits puberty first and gets miles bigger than everyone else and then neglects to keep learning and improving their game because they're finding the rugby so easy. They rely solely on their size and they always get caught out a few years later as they go up to age groups and suddenly aren't the biggest fish in the pond anymore and they've decided to neglect their skill development and game understanding. It can be really simple to keep learning. When I was younger I used to do either a bit of juggling each day or just have a rugby ball hitting a few passes or sitting in my room just practicing the spin on a ball. But essentially you need to learn how you learn best. This ties in with learning and I think it was one of the most important things I did as a younger player and that was the ability to watch what others were doing and then copy them. So I'd watch my fellow players, older players at the club, pros at games and I would look for tips whether it was passing, tackling, positioning and then by trial and error I would work out what worked best for me. It's one of the main reasons I always recommend to younger players to go and watch games live as you get a much better understanding of what's going on off the ball. One thing I picked up really early from those live games was how much players talked on the pitch and communication is inevitable as a professional rugby player so get it ingrained into your head and start practicing at a younger age. Whenever you're watching these pros, just try and ask yourself things like why is so-and-so doing this, what was the outcome, what can I take away? But essentially be curious, ask lots of questions. This drill is more to do with drop kick distance, similar to a goal kick. So the aim is to stand behind the post in the dead ball area and you want to see how far back you can get but still drop kick the ball under the crossbar. Great thing to aim for is to go under the crossbar but still land it over the 22. Like so. If you're right on the limit like that, that's a good thing. As a younger player, you may want to be rugby 100% of the time, but I wouldn't recommend this. I've seen so many players who burn out by the time they're in their late teens and fall out of love with rugby because they had no other interest to balance themselves out. 
As you get older and can make more decisions for yourself, there'll be plenty of temptations that'll pull you away from rugby, mainly alcohol, social activities, relationships, and you need to find a healthy balance between all of these. Professional rugby doesn't last forever, and I would highly recommend either having a degree, a vocation, or a trade that you can fall back on. The professional players I know who didn't have any of these were always far more anxious or worried about rugby ending. As a side note, University Rugby is an amazing place to get picked up by a pro club. She's the hot one. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. This helped me so much as a younger player. Every mistake is a chance to learn and improve. Don't get me wrong, we don't want to be making the same mistake a hundred times in a row, and equally, we don't want to not care and just fling the ball around without thinking. But try new things in training and push yourself. This will help you develop far quicker than the conservative rugby player. As a general rule, if you're completing a skill perfectly 100% of the time, you're probably not pushing yourself hard enough. So if you can pass perfectly off both hands, 10 meters standing still, can you do the same while running flat out, similar to a game? I'm gonna try and push this one out further to the five. A bit long. I get asked this a lot and you don't need to be lifting heavy weights at a young age. If anything, this will hamper your performance as your body's developing. I wouldn't start lifting weights until you're at least 15 or 16 and even then I'd speak to experts, learn properly and take your time with it. But what is useful at a younger age is learning to move in a safe and correct way before you start adding in heavy weight. This will prepare your body to gym, run fast and help reduce injuries. Things I would definitely do again as a younger player are body weight power movements like broad jumps or single leg hops, coordination and balancing exercises like single leg stands or wobble cushions, running drills and agility sessions. We have plenty of videos on the channel if you want to check them out and mobility and prehab exercises like improving your hip flexor or groin strength. A bit long. This is a tough one, but if you have aspirations of playing professionally, it's worth considering. Unfortunately, some positions at the top level need some size. This is normally in the forwards, and the most common position switch at the elite level is a back rower being turned into a hooker because they're not tall enough. It's just something that's worth being aware of as a younger player. If you're a back, you're normally fine, and rugby's definitely going back towards the old saying of if you're good enough, you're big enough. If you look at the likes of players like Colby or McKenzie in recent years. That was ugly, it worked out. Professional sport is brutal, it takes a lot of hard work and it doesn't work out for everyone. There are a lot of politics involved and often there's decisions made about you that seem very unfair and completely out of your control. It's worth being aware of this as a younger player so you know what lies ahead and things like injuries are inevitable so you're gonna have to learn to deal and cope with these. Having said this though, getting to play the sport that you loved as a younger player is one of the coolest things ever. And even when you've had a bad day, either your team's lost or you've picked up a bit of an injury, it's still an amazing day and one that I'm very grateful for. Learning about fueling your body as a younger player can seem quite daunting, but it's really important and can take your rugby to the next level. I have a few general rules that I try to follow. So the first, try to eat as naturally as possible, staying away from the processed food. Real food should always come before supplement. Learn about supplements, mainly why you're taking them and then the checks that you need to do. And finally, eating to put on weight or muscle should be done at your own pace, taking your time. If you want more of a nutrition breakdown, check out this video here. And finally, give yourself the best chance of making it as a pro, make sure you're enjoying it as much as possible and throw yourself into everything 100%. If you're not smiling and enjoying yourself in training and games, you're not gonna make it as far. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it useful, it would really help us if you dropped it a like and if you wanna see more, please consider subscribing. But deal for watching.